I went to my doctor uh, initially because um, I'd had uncontrolled nosebleeds, was feeling incredibly tired. And I don't just mean, you know, like you've, you've had a long day. I mean, waking up in the morning and just feeling exhausted. And, um, and I, I went to my doctor thinking, oh, well, maybe I'm just a bit anemic. I had my firm, first bone marrow biopsy and, um, and it all started to be uh, pretty horrid. Now, I can remember in that meeting um, the uh, doctor turning around to me and saying, well, actually, what you've probably got is something called MDS or myodysplastic syndrome. And uh, my wife broke down. I'm sat there going, OK, so, um, so what does that mean exactly? At that point, I was told that I needed an immediate um, bone marrow transplant if I was to live. I was visibly deteriorating as each week went by. Um, I was breathless. Uh, I looked awful. I was a nasty shade of grey if I wasn't just earth deathly white. Um, I'd, I'd had to stop work because even working from home, I was finding it was difficult because I just couldn't um, concentrate. I went into King's College Hospital for transplant on the day of our 25th, <laughs> 25th wedding anniversary. Following day, first blood test post leaving hospital. And my blood results came back and um, I had a blood count, of, a neutrophil count of zero. I had no graft. And I can remember saying at the time, I think you must have the wrong results. You must have someone else's results because I didn't feel sick. I just felt a bit tired. Um, 24 hours later, I went down with a, um, a neutropenic sepsis. I was rushed into hospital and um, the local hospital immediately put me on uh, massive doses of um, antibiotics and uh, antivirals and um, a, a day later I was taken by ambulance to the um, uh, high dependency unit at King's College Hospital. Now the, um, my donor, he was asked a second time to donate again and he did. I was back into that cycle of waiting for the blood results to come back and I knew that after about 14 days it would start to pick up and then it would double and I'd be well and home. And it never happened, it never got off zero. I went through about two months where I was not great, I had no immune system and I can remember talking to the consultant and saying please don't leave me like this because I didn't think I was going to last till Christmas. So I was writing down what I wanted at my funeral, <laughs> things like that. They eventually, eventually they came back to me and they said, look, um, we've been in touch with um, consultants in North America and we've discussed your case in some depth and um, we're going to do a, a rescue transplant. So they tested my um, then 15 year old son and he was a 50% match. My son uh, on November the 3rd, 2010, uh, donated his stem cells. <coughs> yeah, he, do he donated his stem cells, which ultimately saved my life. I was still having a few blood transfusions and stuff, but uh, I was taking crumbs, 38 different tablets, you know, everything from anti-rejection pills to antivirals, antibiotics, you name it. I didn't really start feeling um, what I would describe as normal till about the end of February, beginning of March of, two, of 2011. It just picked up, it, it got better and better. And uh, yeah, I, I felt pretty reasonable. So I went back to work for just half a day a week. And then half a day a week became two days, became a full week. And by the end of 2011, I was effectively back at work full time. Without telling anyone, I, I somewhat, somewhat stupidly applied to run in the London Marathon in 2011. Now they turned me down thankfully so I thought I can do this I'm gonna do it again so I entered the London Marathon again for 2013. So uh, ran the marathon and you know I, th I think that was the probably the most uplifting day of my life after the birth of my children and my, and my wedding day it, it was just awesome.